Well, hello, this is Josh Nelson with the Plumbing and HVAC Online Dominance Blueprint and excited to be sharing this session on the SEO Blueprint and really what you need to do to get your plumbing or HVAC business so that it ranks on Google and Yahoo and Bing on page one for the most important plumbing and HVAC related keywords. It's a lot of great content in this session. I'm going to be going through it as quickly and as efficiently as I possibly can. Uh, but you're about to discover how you can get your plumbing or HVAC business ranked on page one for the most important plumbing and HVAC keywords in your area. I'm going to share really what the most commonly searched plumbing related keywords are and HVAC related keywords are based on res historic research, based on looking at Google search trends, we are able to ascertain which keywords are being searched most. And by knowing which those keywords are, we can build our strategy around the keywords that are, are actually being searched and are going to drive traffic to your website. So it's important to know what those keywords are to understand them. And then I'm going to share how to build out your website and optimize it for those keywords so that you can get the calls, so that you can get the traffic that's going to make the phone ring. And then I'm going to show you the strategy to move the website from you know page five, page six, to page one, so it's showing up on the first page where most people wind up clicking. By the end of this session, without any question, you'll know why you're not showing up at the top of page one for your city plus plumber or your city plus HVAC or your city plus heating contractor. You'll know why your competition is and know exactly what you'll need to do on your end in order to move yourself from where you are to that page one positioning. How's that sound? Are you excited? Okay, great. Let's get let's get right into it. Well, I want to start by defining what SEO is. And obviously SEO is the acronym for search engine optimization. And it's the, the process of updating and modifying your website and web presence so that you rank on page one for the most important keywords on Google and Yahoo and Bing. So that's really search engine optimization is getting getting ranked in the organic non-paid listings in the search engines. So why is SEO important? Well, I've talked about it a couple times throughout this, talking about it on the, on the Google Maps blueprint. I talked about it on the uh, online, marketing, um, online marketing playbook. But, I mean, it, the fact is there's been a transition from offline to online. Online is now the predominant place people go when they need uh, plumbing and HVAC services and they don't know who to call. And the statistics tell us that more than 77% of consumers go online when they need plumbing or HVAC services. And there's over 20 million searches every single month for the plumbing and HVAC related services. So there's literally thousands of people looking for what you do on a monthly basis right in your area. And it's real important that you get a strategy in place so that you're ranking so those people, people find you when they're looking for, for your services. So let's get into the meat and potato. Let's get into the content and the training for this for this module. There are really six core steps to getting your your company ranked on page one. First, I want to make sure you understand how the search engines work, the differences between the paid, the organic, and the map listings, so we can really know for this search engine optimization stuff that we're focusing specifically on the organic, not the map, not the paid. Um, then. We need to build our website for the most profitable, relate, uh, profitable plumbing related services in your service area. And I'm going to talk more about that, but you really have to be sure that you've got pages for each of your services and pages for each of the sub cities that you operate in. From there, once you've got the right pages based on the keywords, you have to optimize the website so that Google knows what those pages are all about. So really the on-page search engine optimization the title tags, the H1 tags, the meta descriptions, the image alt attribution. I'm going to be talking about each of those separate items uh, and, and really how you can optimize your website so Google puts you in the index. But really the next step is, that, that's going to determine where those pages rank is building authority and, and building inbound links. So optimizing the website is critical. That's step three, having the right pages or the right on-page optimization and everything in between but it's really the inbound links from various places online 
that are going to determine where that website or where that web page on the website ranks. I'm going to talk about how to build the inbound links, where to get them. Um, and then step five, you've got to be creating fresh content on an ongoing basis. Google craves fresh information, relevant information, and he wants to show the most relevant results based on what people search. So you have to be continually creating new, relevant, updated information on your website. I'm going to talk about some methodology on how you can come up with the topics, how you can write the content and get it published to your website. And then of course step six is you want to track, measure, and quantify. So you want to have some mechanisms in place so you can gauge how you're doing, gauge how you're performing, gauge how things are progressing. I'm going to talk about the specific uh, measurement tools that we recommend you put into place. So let's get right into it. I want to make sure we're clear on the search engines. So when we run a search for your city plus plumber, your city plus plumbing, your city plus drain cleaning, your city plus heating repair, your city plus AC contractor, uh, there are really three core components to the search engines. There's the paid listings, the organic listings, and the map listings. And so the paid listings, of course, are along the top and along the side. They're usually highlighted in a slightly different color. And those listings you pay for placement in. So you set up an AdWords account, you pick your keywords, and you pay on a per-click basis to rank in that section on the search engines. The area that shows up below that is going to be something that's a mix between either the map or the organic listings. So I, I had a whole module that I went through that explained how to get ranked on the Google map. And there are some very specific strategies that go into Google Maps optimization. But really what we're going to focus on throughout the remainder of this specific module is getting ranked in the organic listings in the absence of the map. And I know there's some confusion about this, so I want to make it clear right off, right off the bat. The map is critically important, and you want to rank in the map. It's probably the number one place people look when they uh, run a search because it's got the little numbers next to it. People can get a sense of where you're located. But you still have to have a very proactive SEO strategy. And there are a number of reasons that you want to be focused on SEO in addition to Google Maps optimization. The first is you don't have a physical location in every area that you ser probably serve. So there's a lot of little subsidies, there's a lot of surrounding areas. And so right now, the way the Google Map is set up, you're typically only going to rank in the city that you operate in. So in order to really give yourself that wider scope, in the absence of getting ranked on the map for all those other cities, you can rank very well on the organic non-paid listings. Um, the other thing is, a lot of your most profitable services, torrential sewer repair, repiping, water heater installation, a lot of those keywords, when you type them in with your city, don't necessarily generate a map. They just pull organic listings, straight up search engine optimization. So you want to make sure that your SEO strategy gets you placed for those keyword combinations, which are going to tend to drive your most profitable calls and your most profitable service uh, and installation work. So that's why you want to make sure you have an SEO strategy and, and don't just take your eye off the ball and look straight at the Google map. The other thing you want to be aware of, obviously, when you look at the paid listings versus the organic and map listings, uh, you don't have to do much work to get ranked in the, in the pay-per-click listings. You can just pick your keywords and pay on a per-click basis. However, the majority of the population, when they run a search, their eyes gravitate straight to the non-paid listings. Uh, their mind has been trained, either subconsciously or intentionally, to look past the paid listings. And so, budgets being as they are, strategies being the way that they are, you want to show up where people are going to tend to look the most. And you don't have to pay every single time somebody clicks on you in the SEO uh, organic section of the search engines. So that's why you, know, you want to make sure that you understand these different components, the paid, the organic, and the map listings, and why it's really important to be focused on search engine optimization, have a really proactive strategy to, to rank in the organic listings. So step two really is you want to build out your website. Um, and by that I'm really referring to you want to have more pages so that you have more placeholders for the services you provide and the 
area that you serve. Now, I find that a typical plumbing or HVAC website is only between three and five pages. Home, about us, our services, maybe a coupons page, and then contact us. And that's fine, but it's not going to position you to rank for all of the variations uh, of keywords that people are typing when they need your services. And I'm going to be going through some of those variations with you here on the next, uh, on the next slide. So what I want you to understand though is a lot of different things people type in. Every page on your website can only really be ranked for between one and two keyword combinations. So if there's a hundred different keyword variations and you've only got two pages or five pages, you're missing a large portion of the opportunity. So I'm going to talk about how you can build out your web page in a way that makes sense from a consumer perspective, but also uh, really positions you to rank for all of those different keyword combinations. So before we can really get into building out the website, we have to think about what people are typing. We've got to think about what they're looking for uh, when they go to the search engines. So fortunately, we have access to all kinds of information on Google's Google's historical search information and we can see what people are typing most frequently. There's a couple tools you can do use to do this on your own. Obviously we've done a lot of this due diligence and really whittled down a very nice list of the most important keywords. Uh, but if you go to Google and you just type in Google Keyword Tool, that's driven by Google AdWords and you can type in your keywords, plumber, plumbing, emergency plumber, drain cleaning, and Google will spit out a list that says, okay, here are words that are related that people have typed, and this is the search volume associated with, with each. So we used that, we used a number of other tools to develop this list and have really sorted it by the most commonly searched and the highest uh, commercial intent. So the people that are actually in the mind frame for buying or hiring plumbing services. So I'm gonna go through one for plumbing and one for HVAC. But in plumbing, it's <coughs> your city, and when I say your city plus, I'm not really saying you have a, people aren't typing the plus symbol, they're just typing in Orlando plumber or plumber Orlando. So, you know, you get the idea of what I'm trying to represent here. But the most commonly searched combinations are, you know, your city plumber, your city plumbing, your city plumbers, your city water heaters, uh, bathroom remodeling, tankless water heaters, leak detection, drain cleaning, shower repair, boiler repair, plumbing contractor, emergency plumber, water heater repair, shower installation, commercial plumbing, repipe, repiping, residential plumbing, and the list goes on and on. You can print out these slides, you have access to the list sorted by the actual numbers, but use this because these keywords are going to dictate which pages we have on the website and which pages are optimized for which specific keyword combination. Within the air conditioning side, we've got you know air conditioner, air conditioning furnace, air conditioners, HVAC, air conditioning repair, AC repair, heating repair, furnace repair, uh, AC installation, and, and the list goes on and on. Again, the whole idea behind these keyword lists is understanding the way people think when they're looking for your services so that you can optimize your website for the things people are typing into the search engines. So we need to build more pages. And like I was saying earlier, you know, the typical plumbing website's got home, about us, our services, coupons, contact us. Well, we just saw there's a lot of different keyword combinations. And there's not just one city that you operate in. So for each one of these keywords, we want to combine them with the various services, services or various cities that we operate in. So we have to have a scalable version of the site with pages for each of the most important keyword combinations. So here's the way I'd like to see you build out your website. Obviously keep the home, about us, coupons, and contact us. Those are core pages. You want to have that information. It helps with conversion. We get, get into that in the elements of your website conversion strategy. But from an SEO perspective, the easiest way for you to think this through is you want to have a page under services. So you probably have a services section on your site now and it lists out all of the things you do. 
water heater installation, water heater repair, drain cleaning, emergency plumbing, trenchless sewer replacement, tankless water heaters, and the list goes on and on. Well, rather than just having those listed, we want to create a specific page on the website for each one of those services. So we want to have a page for emergency plumbing and a page for leak detection and a page for toilet repair and toilet installation. So you get the idea. In addition to that, we know that you probably service somewhere between a 25 and 30 mile radius. So you have a primary city, wherever you're located, you have a, a main city that you serve, which is the big city, but then you've got sub-cities, suburbs, towns that are also in that area. And a lot of people are not just going to type in the big city, they're going to type in the town. And I'll just use an example just to, 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 for clarity. In Miami, which is where I'm located, there's Miami, which is the big city, but there are a bunch of little cities like Kendall and Palmetto Bay and Pinecrest and Doral and Miami Beach. And the people that live in those subtowns necessarily are going to type in Kendall Plumber, Kendall Emergency Plumbing, Kendall Water Heater Specialist. So you want to make sure that you have pages for the subsidies or the towns that you operate in combined with your services. That way you have indexation, you've got pages that can be ranked for all of the different variations of keywords somebody might type when they're looking for your plumbing or HVAC related services. And so a way to, to, to scale this, you want your website to be built in a way that it has a logical progression. Because you're going to wind up with several hundred pages on your website. You don't want to have them all in the core navigation. It would be almost impossible to follow. But if you have logically designed drop downs, um, it makes it easy for the flow from a navigation perspective. But just remember, um, that people aren't necessarily going to browse to the Kendall emergency plumbing page, right? The idea is that they typed in subsidy emergency plumbing and you've got a page that's written specifically for that search and that resonates really well with that searcher, well they're going to come in via that page but then they're going to wind up navigating to your regular website. So again, one way to do this is under services, have a drop down menu that lists out all of your services. And under service area, have a drop down that lists your main cities. And I think that in any normally sized geographic area, you're going to have between 10 and 25 sub cities that you want to target. So you can have a drop down that lists those cities, right? So then when you have city one plumber plumbing, city two plumber plumbing, and then a side drop down that references each one of your services combined with those subsidies. And this image gives you a visual representation of how that can play out. So within your one subsidy, you can have your most important keywords combined with that city. And remember, what this is doing is it's going to create indexation. It's going to create the possibility for you to be showing up on the search engine somewhere for each one of these keyword combinations. I'm going to talk about how to get those to rank well when we get to authority building and link building a little bit later in this presentation. So once you've determined what your services are, you've determined what your subsidies are, and you've combined those, and just so you know there's some tools to help combine these keywords, one way to do it is to have a text editor, like a, not Word, but some type of text editor that you could put in, here are my services, and then on a, separate, on a separate line, here are my cities. And then there are a number of online tools. The one I use most of the time is called MergeWords. It's mergewords.com. You can take all of your services, take all of your cities, press merge, and it will create a combination of each one of those keyword combinations. And once you've got that list of the different keyword combinations, now you can go to work with saying, okay, what pages do I have to have on my website? map out where those pages are going to land within your navigation and then you can get into the optimization portion of the of the conversation so how do you optimize these pages so that when google finds them the emergency page and the subsidy three page and the subsidy 
emergency plumbing page. Well, there are some very specific things you can do on the website itself to help Google understand what the page is about and put it in its index for that keyword. So there's a lot of different things and there, there's literally hundreds of different variables that Google looks at from an on-page perspective. For the purposes of this blueprint course, I really want to give you the 80-20 rule. The 20% of the activities that are going to drive 80% of the results or 80% of the placement. <laughs> so these items I have listed on the screen are the most important things that you need to be doing. And the number one thing Google looks at to determine what a page is about is the title tag. So you need to have a unique title tag on the home page and on the sub pages of your website that really emphasizes that core keyword that you want to rank for in that town. And I'm going to show you a visual representation of, of these, but your title tag, which is really what shows up in the title at the very top of your page, and I've got an image up that shows you the title tag and what that is. The next thing is your H1 tag, and your H1 tag is the big block of text that shows up at the very beginning of your site. And there's an HTML code, you set it as H1, and you want to get your keywords in the H1 tag on each page of your website. Uh, when you have images on the page, pictures of your trucks, pictures of your logo, use your primary keywords in the naming of that image and the alt attribution of that image. The URLs on the page, so I am not a big fan of buying keyword rich domains. So just because you want to rank for Los Angeles Plumber doesn't mean you have to try and get the domain losangelesplumber.com. That's completely unnecessary. But getting your keywords into your URL is still a good plan. So you could be Los Angeles Plumber but have the domain name joetheplumber.com. Title tag in your homepage would say Los Angeles Plumber, Joe the Plumber. But what I'm talking about with getting your keywords into your URLs is when you get to the emergency plumbing page, your URL could be joetheplumber.com slash Los Angeles Emergency Plumber. Right now you get your keywords in the URL and you can do that for each one of your keywords. So that's a good strategy. Um, the other thing you want to do from an on-page optimization perspective, so once you've built out your pages and you've got the unique title tag, the H1 tag, images, obviously the content or the, uh, the description on each one of these pages need to be unique and they need to speak to the specific keywords. So on your emergency page, you'd have the title tag be City Emergency Plumbing Services, 24-hour emergency plumber in city. And then your H1 tag would say City Emergency Plumber. And then the body would say, do you have a plumbing emergency in the city area? Question mark. And then have some content that really speaks to the person's situation. So it can't just be written for the search engines. And in the website conversion fundamentals module, I talk a lot about the conversion elements, speaking to the person as a human that will help to drive inbound calls. But in that section, you can say, hey, you know, when you've got a plumbing emergency, you need somebody that's going to pick up your, the phone immediately, get somebody out to your house and resolve the issue. At XYZ Plumbing, we've got 24-hour emergency responders standing by to take your call. You're going to speak with a live person, every machine, and we can get somebody out to your house within three hours, guaranteed, or the service is free. Call us immediately, blah, 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 you know, blah, blah. So what I'm saying is write content that speaks to that specific thing. So you got to have a specific block of text that talks about emergencies on the emergency page and a specific block of text that talks about um, you know, drain cleaning on the drain cleaning page. But once you've got each one of those pages built out and they're all ready to go and let's just say you've got 75 really good unique pages on your website for the specific keywords you want to rank for, well, the next thing you want to do is help Google understand or know that you've got those 75 pages. 
and that's where an XML sitemap comes into play. XML sitemap is really just a, an index or a list of all of the pages on your website and how often they're updated. And I know it sounds complicated, but it's really not. There are a number of tools that will help you generate an XML sitemap. Um, automatically. So if you go to Google and you just type in a search for XML sitemap generator, you'll get a number of URLs that say type in your type in your website address and when you type it in, it will generate a file that is that XML sitemap. And then you can download that sitemap and then upload it to Google Webmaster Tools and Bing Webmaster Tools. The other option, if your website's on a CMS or a content management system platform like Joomla or WordPress, there are plugins and extensions that automate this for you. Um, probably, maybe you have a web developer managing all this for you, so this will be a good short list for you to say, hey, are the title tags right, are the H1 tags right, do we have unique content on all these pages? And then, hey, you know, Mr. Web Developer, did you create a sitemap? If not, can you please create it and, and submit it? So Google Webmaster Tools and Bing Webmaster Tools are really just the webmasters section on these engines where you can update information and so if you go to google.com slash webmaster tools or if you just run a search for Google Webmaster Tools you'll see where you can set up a Google Webmaster Tools account you'll have a simple verification process to prove that you're on the owner of the website and then you can submit this sitemap and what that does is it just makes sure that Google knows you don't just have a home page, you've got 75 pages and pages for each one of your services and in the cities that you operate in. And so those are the things you want to be doing uh, from an on-page optimization perspective uh, pretty much across the board. So I talked about having a unique title tag and your home page title tag is extremely important. Right? You want to make sure that you've got your keywords in the title tag. What I see a lot on the home page of a, of a plumbing website is the name of the plumber or the name of the company. So if it's Joe's Plumbing, up in the title, it just says Joe's Plumbing. Well, that's fine if you want people to find you when typing in your company name, which they're going to anyways. But really what you want to do is move your keywords, the most important keyword, to as far to the left in the title as possible. So. If you're in Orlando and your main keyword is plumber or plumbing, you want to get the word Orlando plumber in as f at the very beginning on the left, separated by your company name, because you do want to have your company name in there for the purposes of Google Maps optimization. So when Google spiders the page, it's finding your company name in the title. But you have 64 characters, and you don't want to go crazy. You don't want to try and make this a huge title, but you've got 64 characters to get your one or two keyword combinations in there. And so if you use something like Orlando Plumber space your company name in Orlando, comma, Florida, well now you've got Orlando Plumber, your company name, Orlando Plumbing, Plumbing Orlando. And so obviously swap out Orlando for your city, but I want to show you a real world example of how you can really work the keywords into your titles so that you can rank for a variety of different keyword combinations. And I want it to be clear that you don't just do that same title tag on all of your pages. So I talked about building out pages for each one of your services, each one of your cities. You want to now do the same thing that you did for the plumbing page on your home page for each of those pages. So I've got some examples along the side, SEO optimized title tags. The emergency page should read Orlando Emergency Plumbing, 24-hour emergency plumbing service in Orlando, comma, Florida. The water heater page could have the title tag Orlando Water Heater Repair, Water Heater Repair Services in Orlando. Orlando Drain Cleaning, Drain Cleaning Repair Services in Orlando, comma, Florida, et cetera. And so you want to have the, your keywords with your cities in the title tag with specific thought-out optimization for each one of the pages on your site. And so you want to do this. So you've got 75 pages, then you want to do a, a different title tag for each one of the 75 pages. And the same concept applies for the title tag. So that, what I have pointed to with the green arrow there, is a, is a title tag. 
And again, this is something you can do pretty simply within a CMS system, or if you've got a web developer that built your website in HTML, just a matter of telling them, hey, let's make sure we've got the keywords and the title tags. I mean, in the H1 tags, excuse me. That's the H1 tag. So again, on the homepage or the Lando Plumber, you know, welcome to our company website. We're in full service. This is what we do. For the emergency page, Orlando Emergency Plumber, uh, etc. So you want to have the title tag, the H1 tag, the content, and the uh, and the images all to be restating the keywords that you want to rank for for that particular page. Another thing you can do to help Google understand your true service area, and this is more of a, a Google Places optimization thing, is to put a heat map on your website that shows your true service area. Uh, and if you can do that through uh, geo-modified content on the website, so it's not just uh, a map with an image, but it's actually got a heat map with geographic coordinates associated with it, that's a great strategy to really help Google understand your true service area. And really, this comes into play on the home page, but even more importantly on the sub pages. Because I've noticed, as I've seen some companies implement these strategies based on my recommendations, they've built out all of the city pages and all of the service pages, but they've kept the content from city one to city two to city three to city four pretty much the same. So they haven't mixed it up and that can create a problem. With Google's latest algorithm, Google Penguin and Google Panda, Google's trying to combat spam. So it doesn't want pages that are set up just for the sake of being set up for ranking. It wants fresh, relevant content and the most relevant pages based on the query that the person typed in. So if Google looks across your site and sees 15 pages with the exact same thing with only one change being the name of the city, well, that can be problematic. So you have to be creative in the way that you make the content for each of these pages unique. So on the Subcity 1 versus Subcity 2 versus Subcity 3 pages, uh, you can have a block of content about that city, uh, the demographics of the city, the population, um, one strategy we like to use is using a tool called Nearby Now, and I talked about it in the Google Maps Blueprint module uh, because it helps to automate the review request process where your check technicians check in on a mobile device, and then after they've checked in, they type in the customer's e email address, and an email goes out to them thanking them for their business and asking them to write a review. It works extremely well for that purpose. But the other place that it really comes into play is creating fresh content for the sub pages on your website. So if you've got 15 cities that you're optimizing for, trying to come up with 15 unique pieces of content for each of those pages can be a little bit, a little bit cumbersome. Where if you know you're servicing in those 15 cities and you've got technicians going to each one of these places on a weekly, monthly basis, having them use nearby now, check in at the location where the service is being provided, and then type a brief description, doing a repipe estimate, um, unclogging a drain, installing a new water heater. Every time they check in, that check-in, as well as the photo that they take at the location, as well as the brief description that they typed, will then syndicate back through a short code to the subcity page. So what this does is it's creating unique geo-modified content that makes these pages hyper relevant and gets you past any potential spam issues for those subcity pages. So you know if that's something you're interested, you can take a look and learn more about that at nearbynow.co slash plumber SEO and you can learn about the system, how it works, what the costs are. But whether you do that or not, it's real important that you know these pages should not be duplicated. They should be unique, at least 65% unique from one page to the next. 
And so that's, that's really the process of building out your website so that you have pages for each one of the services combined with each one of the cities that you operate in with unique content on each and correct optimization on each of the pages. What that does is it gives you a placeholder, a spot on Google for all of those different keyword combinations. Now that doesn't mean you're ranking on page one or page two or page three. It just means that Google knows you've got a page that could potentially rank for your city emergency plumber, your city plumbing, your city drain cleaning, your city trenchless sewer replacement, your city uh, leak detection, etc. So the next question becomes, how do you get those pages to move from page six or page seven or page nine to page one? And the answer is, it's really all about the authority of that URL. So whether it's your home page or the leak detection page, each one of those pages has some authority in Google's index. And Google ranks the highest authority page first, and the second highest authority second, and third, and fourth, etc. So authority really is driven by the quantity of quality inbound links. So the way I like to think about it is 30% of the battle is getting the website right and getting the title tags and having everything that I just described squared away correctly. The other 70% or more of the battle is getting the authority up by getting inbound links. So if there's any secret sauce to ranking well in the search engines, it really is links and authority. Now the major caveat to that is you can't just get garbage links. You, you, know, you don't want to just have a thousand links. And when I say links, I'm talking about other websites hyperlinking to your website. And I'll explain a little bit more with some specific examples. But the latest algorithm changes, like I talked about before, Google Panda and Google Penguin, Google's trying to prevent spam. And so a lot of internet marketers, a lot of SEO guys realize, hey, it's all about the links. That's what the Google algorithm was built upon, and they figured out ways just to get a bunch of links with random anchor text pointed back to the pages that they want to have ranked well. Well, if those links aren't relevant, if they're from websites that really don't add any value to the internet, Google has recognized that. And it's hurt, it can actually hurt your ranking more than help. So it's about getting quality, relevant links back to your homepage, back to your subpages through content creation and really strategic link building that will help you outrank your competition. So how do you get the links? Where do you get the links? Well, there's a number of what I like to call low-hanging fruit, and you know then you've got to get a little bit creative and you've got to get a little bit um, industrious, but really. It all starts with, well, I'm going to show you this visual. I think it works better. The lowest hanging fruit is going to be your online directory listings. Websites like Google Maps, Yahoo Local, City Search, Yelp.com, Judy's Book, Best of the Web, Yellow Pages, Hot Frog, eLocal Plumber, Service Magic, and the list goes on and on. So there's all these websites that basically are a listing of companies, some of them halal reviews, but for the most part you can have yourself added to those directories completely free of charge and enter your company's name, address, phone number, description, and of course a link back to your website. So those create some authoritative links back to your company. So you want to make sure that you go in and you've got yourself on those online directory listings. They're also valuable from Google Maps optimization perspective because they give you citations, which are real important for getting ranked on the map. Um, so there's where you want to start, is your online directory listings. From there, you want to look at your associations that you're involved with. And, and so I've, I've got a visual that's you know, pointing out a PHCC and QSC. You know, I'm assuming you're involved in some type of association. So it could be the ACCA, it could be um, Nexstar, it could be Service Roundtable, it could be your local chapter, PHCC, but going to those websites for those organizations, getting listed on them as a member, 
that gives you citations and it gives you links back to your website. Um, go, you can go to your go to your colleagues that have affiliated industry type businesses. So it could be if you're in plumbing, going to the HVAC contractor and getting a link to your website from their site and vice versa. It could be the emergency restoration guy that has a really good website, getting a link from his site to your website. Those are relevant companies that you can get links from that will add more authority to your domain. The next thing you can look at is the suppliers that you purchase from. So if you buy a lot from American Standard, if you buy a lot from Moen, or if you've got a co-op agreement with Bryant or one of the other AC manufacturers, the places where you buy your merchandise, in a lot of cases, will have a section on their website that mentions their value-add resellers or their customers, and you can get a link from those. The other kind of similar, because I've got it at the top and now I've got it at the bottom, low-hanging fruit links are social media profiles. So I'm, I, we have a whole section about the power of social media and how you can harness social media to get repeat and referral business. But simply from a link building perspective, if you go in and you set up a Facebook page and a Twitter account and a LinkedIn profile and a Google Plus page and a Pinterest profile and a YouTube channel, well, now you're creating links because each one of them allow you to enter your company's name, address, and phone number, have a description, and of course a place to, to put your, your website address. So that creates inbound links back to your website. Other local associations that you're involved in, you know, if you're a member of the Chamber of Commerce, if you're involved in a networking group like BNI, Business Networking International, or some other networking organization, or if you're involved in a local charity, all of these have websites that list their members and you can get a great link from from those types of companies. Now another great place to get links is to type in your city directory, right? Your city directory. And that's going to come up with a list of websites that list businesses that are in your city. And a lot of cases you can get added to those directories. Another great thing to search would be plumbing directory or HVAC directory or air conditioning contractor directory. Those are directories that basically list plumbing companies and list air conditioning companies. So by finding those types of directories and those types of websites you can have yourself added and that's going to create inbound links back to your website. And so these are all really great strategies that are within your grasp that aren't abstract but will drive inbound links from quality relevant sources back to your website which will create more authority and will help your domain outrank the competition. Obviously you need to have a mechanism where you're creating fresh content on your website and I'm going to talk about the power of content creation and help you come up with a methodology for how to come up with content and how to use content but you should have a blog on your website where you're posting content and you can take that content and upload it to various online content sites. So websites like This Old House or eHow.com, if you write an article about the differences between a tanked and tankless water heater and then you post it on eHow.com, you can get a link back to your website. And you can be a little more strategic with your content creation strategy in that you can take that article that you wrote about tanks versus tankless, get a link to your home page, but then also get a link to the tankless water heater installation page on your website. And now we're really starting to get creative in building links to the sub pages on the website that we want to see arise in the search engines. Because you can't have every link, most of these that I've talked about are going to point back to your home page, you can't have every link pointing to the home page. You need pages, links back to those sub pages if you want them to rise in the search engines as well. So this is what I consider my, my link building authority um, circle, right? You want to make sure you're approaching each one of these opportunities and getting those types of links back to your website. Now you might be surprised that plumbing and HVAC is highly competitive. 
right? There's a lot of plumbing contractors, there's a lot of HVAC contractors, and a lot of them have invested heavily in internet, and they've invested heavily in getting themselves higher in the search engines. But you might be surprised that if you really tackle these elements that I'm talking about, just these, and you don't do any of the other things I'm talking about, you will notice that you've probably got enough links to outrank your competition in your area. But I want to share some additional thoughts and some additional strategies on how you can do even more from a link building perspective. And so a ninja strategy that you can implement is called competitive link acquisition. And the way I like to think of it is if links and quality and quantity inbound links are the secret sauce to outranking your competition, then if we can figure out who's linking to your competition or what links your competition have, and we can get those same or similar links pointed back to your website, then you can outrank them because you'll have more authority at that point. So competitive link acquisition is the process of figuring out who's in the top position for your most important keywords, reverse engineering their link profile and seeing what links they have, and getting those same or similar links pointed back to your website. So a simple way to do this is just to go to google.com and type in your city plumber or your city HVAC contractor or your city air conditioning repair, whatever your keyword is, and look at who's in the top position, look at who's in the second position. But let's just take the top guy, right? He's there because his website is optimized in a way that Google knows what he should be ranked for, and he's got more quality and quantity inbound links than the competition. So now that you know who he is, you can use a couple different tools. You can use Majestic SEO, you can use Raven Tools, you can use Backlink Watch, and you can take their URL or their website address, put it into those tools, press Run Report, and those tools will all come back with a list of links. Okay, so your number one competitor is competitor.com, let's just say. Google spits out a list. Here are the 392 inbound links that that competitor has. And you can look at it and you can say, hmm, well look at that. He's got a link from the local chamber of commerce. He's got a link from the PHCC. He's got a link from an article that he posted on the local newspaper. He's got a link from the local networking chapter. And by looking at that and figuring out what those links are, you can systematically start to say, okay, I'm going to get that link. I know I can get that link and get it back to my website. And I'm going to write an article. I'm going to post it to that online newspaper and get a link back from that site. And by doing that on a consistent basis, not just for your first competitor, but for your second and third and fourth and fifth competitors, by doing that, and having a strategy in place to get those same or similar links back to your website, that's how you can start to dominate the search engines for your most important plumbing keywords. So I just want to go and share with you what those resources were. Again, uh, MajesticSEO.com, BacklinkWatch.com, OpenSiteExplorer.org. These are great tools for creating um, for doing competitive link acquisition, for understanding what your competitors links profiles are and getting those same or similar links pointed back to your website. So but step five really is though you have to be creating fresh content. Google loves fresh content and you know in some cases with the changes in the algorithm just because you got a great website with the right title tags and all of the best links sometimes they're starting to discount you if they're not seeing fresh information posted on a consistent basis. So you need to come up with a methodology where you're coming up with content and you're posting it to your website. So I want to give you a framework for figuring out what content you can write, why you should create content, and how you can start to do it consistently. I want to start by kind of giving you the framework that you are a subject matter expert. You might not be considering yourself a writer, you might not be considering yourself a content creator, but you are a subject matter expert. There are things that you know that the general population doesn't know, that they'd be interested in learning about. You're a plumber, you own a plumbing business, 
you're an HVAC contractor, you have a team of guys that are you know, experts in this area. So you can create content on the subjects that you know most about. The differences between tanked and tankless water heaters. Why you would want to consider trenchless versus a regular project. Um, the differences between copper and PCV piping. So you get the idea there's a lot of different topics you could come up with that you can create content about. Now I want you also to consider that content isn't just written word. It's not just articles. Content can come in a variety of forms. Um, really, the most popular are going to be articles, videos, and audios. And you should really stop and think about what content creation methodology works best for you. So some people are great writers. They like to sit down, they like to write, they like to type, and that's just their strength, and that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Other people like to be on camera. Like me personally, I like to create videos. I'm very comfortable creating videos. Other people can talk. They can talk your ear off about how, how you know, whatever topic that, they, that they're passionate about. So you can create content on any of these different ways. And <clears throat> I'll just use <clears throat> video as an example. You can set up a camera, just a simple camera, explaining one of those topics, the, the differences between tanked and tankless, and just explain it like you were explaining it to a customer. And now you'll actually have multiple pieces of content, because you'll have a video, right, which is you on camera that you can upload to YouTube, you can upload to Vimeo, you can upload to Metacafe. That one piece of content can create multiple inbound links to your website and to the subpages on your website. But you can also take that video, save out the audio portion of it, and you've got an audio. And you can take that audio file and upload it to your website, upload it to various places online. You can use a transcription service like castingwords.com, for instance, upload that audio or that video file, and somebody will take it and they'll type it up, and for a couple bucks, you'll have a complete article based on what you said, like a word-for-word -word transcription of that. And now you've got a piece of content you can post to your blog, you can take it and put it on eHow, or one of those other article directory sites. So you want to be creating content on a consistent basis, using your website's blog as the hub to post it, but then syndicating it, like I talked about. Syndicating it to article directory sites if it's text, sending it to video sites like Vimeo and Metacafe and YouTube.com if it's videos. And that's going to create a lot of authority and a lot of fresh content on your website, on your domain, which is going to really help with the overall ranking of the website on the search engines. So now that you've built out your website, you've optimized it correctly, you've got an ongoing link building strategy in place where you're creating inbound links and really moving up in the search engines, you want to put some tools in place so that you can track, measure, and quantify and really make sure that you're moving in a positive direction. And there are, are a lot of different tracking mechanisms you can put in place. But I'm going to recommend three core tracking mechanisms. The first is Google Analytics. And Google Analytics really is just a tracking tool, it's completely free, that will show you specifically how many visitors got to your website on a daily, weekly, monthly, annual basis what keywords they typed in to get there, what pages on your website they visited, how long they stayed, and a lot of additional information. But the main thing you want to know from Google Analytics is when I started this whole SEO process, how many visitors was I getting to my website? Maybe it was five, maybe it was 20, maybe it was 100, maybe it was 500. But it's good to know. And then you can see on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, so you can report against all of this, exactly how many you're getting now, tomorrow, a week from now, a month from now. And that's a really important metrics to see, okay, is the number of visitors to my website increasing? Is the variety of keywords that they're finding me on increasing? Am I going in a positive direction? You can also set up reports right within Google Analytics. Again, it's a free tool that will tell you, this week, here's how many visitors. How many visitors were here versus last week? This month, how many visitors versus last month? And it's great to benchmark and to make sure you're headed in a positive direction. To get set up on Google Analytics, you would just go to google.com slash analytics, 
It's a simple process. I mean, you really have a lot of information on how to do this, um, but you verify that you own the website through a variety of different options, and then you install a small piece of code onto your website, and you've got the tracking in place, and you're ready to go. The other tracking mechanism that I recommend is keyword tracking. So at the beginning of this process, we really thought about what are the keywords people are typing in, and we came up with a list. So you want to have your list of keywords, all of those keywords combined with your cities and subcities, and there are tools that will tell you how you're ranking on Google and Yahoo and Bing for those various keywords. Um, there are really a lot of these tools. There's raventools.com and there's brightlocal.com. The one I recommend is called gshiftlabs.com. That's a gshiftlabs.com. And set up an account. There is a cost associated with this service, but you take your keywords, you put them into gshift labs, and then you can set up a daily or weekly or monthly report that says, okay, starting, what position was I in for My City Plus Plumber, My City Plus Plumbing, My City Plus Emergency Plumber, and then on a weekly basis, you can see how you're trending. So if you built out the website correctly, if you've got the right title tags, if you're doing link building, you'll see yourself move up the results. And when you see yourself stagnating, you can go back to that keyword, figure out which page is optimized for it, look at your links, look at your link profile, and do things to really spurn that keyword to the next level. The third really important tracking mechanism that I recommend is call tracking. So having better rankings and more visits to the website is all fine and dandy. But in the plumbing and HVAC business, nothing happens until a call is made. And calls are what drive service revenue and everything is driven off the call. So you want to have some type of tracking mechanism in place to know how many calls are coming in on a monthly basis and what's happening with those conversations. Are they turning into sales? Because that's where the rubber beats the road. That's why we're doing all of this. Who cares if you're in the number one position if it doesn't result in dollars to the business? So again, there are a number of tools that you can use. Um, there's Call Source and there's Century Interactive. Uh, one of the tools I've seen used prevalently is called CallFire, and it's callfire.com. And with on that site, what you can do is you can pick a phone number based on your area code. So whatever the number is, 561-305, uh, you type in the number you want to get, and it's a nominal fee um, on a monthly basis, but you get a tracking number. And then you can take that tracking phone number and you can put it in the graphics on your website. You can put it in the images, uh, the title, the, the header graphic. You can put it in the call now graphic. And that number will ring to your office. It's just a forwarding number, so somebody, somebody dials it. it rings to your office just like it always does, but it's actually a tracking number. So you can report against how many calls did I get via the internet and play back recordings of those conversations. And it's extremely powerful to know when I started all this, I was getting like five or six calls a month via the internet. And now that my process is really off the ground that I'm ranking for all these different keywords, now I'm getting 60 or 70 calls every single month and then go in and listen to those conversations and ascertain how many of those calls turned into book service and know what the revenue associated with that service is. So these are the types of tracking mechanisms I really recommend. There's a lot of different things you can do, but having analytics, having keyword tracking, and having call tracking really gives you the most important key performance indicators so you can know how this is all working for you. So just to recap, you know, Five steps, six steps to getting ranked on page one. The first, obviously you want to understand the search engines, like we talked about, the paid versus the maps versus the organic. You want to build out your website for your most profitable plumbing-related services and your service area. And so that's a function of building pages on your site for all of the plumbing services that you offer and all of the cities that you operate in. And then if you really want to be ambitious, all of those cities combined with all of your services. Then you want to go in and optimize those pages for the search engines. Update the title tags, update the H1 tags, make sure the body content makes sense and, and restate your keywords. Make sure that your images have your keywords in them. Make sure that your URLs have your keywords in them. 
and then take and create an XML sitemap, submit it to Google Webmaster Tools so that Google knows what each of the key each of the pages that you built on your website are. Then you got to get proactive with building inbound links and building the authority for your domain. And that's really by you know, going into the online directories and going to your um, associations that you're affiliated with, going to your supply house, uh, going to your friends that have plumbing and HVAC and electrical and allied industry websites, and getting those links back to your website, which build the authority. Doing the competitive link acquisition, figuring out who your top competitors are, looking at their links, and then figuring out how you can get those same or similar links back to your website. And then creating fresh content on an ongoing basis. Creating articles, creating videos, creating audios, syndicating them online, doing all of it in that way so that your website has so much authority and so much relevance that it will outrank your competition. And you can really, like what this, this whole program is about, dominate the search engines for your most important plumbing related keywords in your area. And then of course you want to put the right tracking in place. You want to be able to track, measure, and quantify how you're ranking, how your traffic's being impacted, and most importantly how the phone is being impacted in terms of new calls, in terms of new revenue, in terms of business growth. So that's the SEO blueprint. I really tried to lay out the entire foundation peel back the curtain, give you all of the pieces of the puzzle so that you can take this, implement it in your business, and dominate the search engines. I'll talk to you soon on the next module.